Hello, I pray that you're well today. As we're in a series on attitude, let me read to you this scripture. From Romans chapter 12, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. In other words, because God's mercy is real, we offer our life as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is real worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing, and perfect will. Does your mind need to be renewed? Does it need to think again about what's true? As we look at that Wayne Cadero book, the phrase that's used in it, if God has said that he has a great plan for your life, isn't it time you believed him? Renew your mind. God has a great plan for your life. It's that scripture. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. That if we're going to have a renewed mind, we have a renewed mind with renewed hope, with sense toward the future, with leaning forward. There are storms in life. Maybe you're going through one right now. But the reality of where the storm is, is significant. We don't let the outside storms become inside storms. Are there storms? There are storms all around us, right? Disappointments, sadness, difficulties, challenges, storms all the time. It's rare that there is no storm. But do we allow the storm on the inside, inside of our heart, inside of our mind, we allow the storm to be inside our mind, then we don't have a renewed mind. Where is the storm? And if I might be so bold, Jesus. Jesus is in control of all storms. He has a plan. Renew your mind with the sense of a future, but don't let the storms of life set you apart. And if I, he writes this statement, see negative circumstances as changing. Think about this for a moment. How many times a day do you say something that's negative? The the words that come out of our mouth are critical, evaluative, not positive. And, And so he uses this language. When we talk about how we speak about a problem, if we're always talking about problems as being that which is in control, as opposed to seeing God actually changing that, God actually intervening, the storm not becoming the actual truth of our lives, but rather, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. Do you know what I'm praying for you today? As I pray that you pray for me, that God would renew our mind again. It says, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. What's the pattern of this world? Negative? Evaluative? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. May, may God transform your mind today, and may he transform my mind. Then we'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. May we have the mind of Christ today. And may God truly renew our mind. Let's pray. Dear God, may we know that we have a hope and a future with you. May the storms on the outside not become storms on the inside. And may we know that you are the one who is able to change things. Give us a heart and a mind that's renewed in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. I pray indeed, God by his power, 
renews your mind and you may believe and trust that he has a hope and a future for you. God bless you.